I'm on? Okay, okay, cool. Let me start a timer. Hello, mic check is good, volume is good? Okay. In 2018, Daniel Compton made a post on Clojureverse, and he basically said, can we create a universal format for, a universal formatter for Clojure code? Basically, can we make like a Go format, but for Clojure code? And this was a cool thread. There was like lots of community involvement on this thread, lots of uh, valuable insight from a lot of people. Some of the people in this room I know participated in that thread. Um, but ultimately, no tool was ever created, right? And this always like irked me. And so uh, for the last year or so, I've been working on standard closure style. And this is my take on this challenge. And as of this week, I believe this library is ready for most closure code bases. So, and this is for formatting. So last night, I cloned the Metabase code base, and so it's like on my machine right now. And so there's like 700 files and like 100,000 lines of closure code, so that's like a pretty uh, substantial closure code base. And I have standard installed on my system, so let's just format the entire Metabase code base right now. Okay, so that took seven, <laughs> right? So that took uh, less than two seconds. And then um, there's also this command check, and we just formatted it, so it should, this should check and be like valid, but, right. So yeah, it's all valid, okay. So um, yeah, demo is worth a thousand lightning talks. Isn't that the phrase? Okay. Okay, so let me, I wanna clarify that standard closure style is not a linter. So it does not compete with or replace CLJ Condo. Please use CLJ Condo. <laughs> but now you can also use standard closure style on your development teams. So standard closure style is primarily concerned with the way the code looks. So white space, indentation, trailing, closing parens, things like this. As closure developers, we have awesome tools and we all love to do things in our own special way. And uh, when you work together on a team, you just often have these like small frictions on pull requests, like white space, indentation, oh, move this print here, my editor moves it there, right? Anyone dealt with this? I don't know, these are like not, not a big thing and they're just like small paper cuts. And I would really like, I hope to solve this for our community. So let me just like show you, can we see this? Okay, yeah, that's okay. Let me show you what some of the, like, I don't have time in a lightning talk to show you everything, but I'm just gonna give you like a tour of what uh, standard closure style will do to your code. So here's an example. It's gonna kind of remove some excess white space that you probably don't want anyway. Note that it doesn't affect this comma, right? Okay. Um, no one writes code like this, but if you, do, if you do send this into the formatter, it'll give you this as an output, okay? Um, so if you, standard closure style does not, it is not a forceful pretty printer. It takes the code that you give it and it adjusts it. Remove a little white space here, indent here, move a closing paren there. That's more or less what it does, with one exception I'll talk about in a sec. But if you have, if you have maps like this, or uh, vectors, where you have vertically aligned your elements, then it, it's not gonna change those things, okay? Uh, another example would be like vertical let, let bindings. This is really popular. If you give this to the formatter, it's gonna respect it. It's not gonna change it. So indentation. Again, no one writes code like this, okay? But if you send this into the formatter, uh, it, will, it will do this. By default, standard closure style does what is known as fixed indentation. Back on that closure verse thread from six years ago, uh, Nikita Tonsky wrote like a blog post proposing to do indentation in this way, where it's just, it looks at the structure of the parens and it just basically does two spaces of indentation unless something is directly vertically aligned. And this, became, this is known as fixed indentation, and that is what this tool does, okay? So if you're a parent for a user, this is just how it works anyway, right? If you're like a default cursive user or a parent for user, this is no change for you. This is just like how it works. So I wanna point out this as an example of a multi-arity function. And you can see that this paren uh, is indented beyond the opening boundary of this. And so that's like incompatible with parinfer and standard closure style will just dedent that so that it's uh, aligned. Okay, but there is an exception to this fixed indentation. 
and we call this rule three alignment. And so when I first wrote this project, I wrote it as a pure fixed indentation tool, and then I ran it on a bunch of code bases, and it just made, it made a bunch of changes that didn't improve, it didn't improve things, it just made things work, or it just changed things for no reason. It wasn't making the code base better. So if you vertically, in this case, Baz is vertically aligned under bar, and that's on the next line inside of this form. So standard closure style sees this, and it says, okay, you want to vertically align everything to this level. So this is called rule three indentation. And it's the next line that, is, that determines this. Again, what you give the formatter will influence its output. It's not a hard, pretty printer. So this is an example of normal fixed indentation. You see that Baz is not aligned with bar. And so it just does the normal two-space fixed indentation. Okay, here's another example. This is like slightly more realistic code. You see this threading macro. This is nicely vertically aligned here. And so standard closure style does not change this, right? Okay. Um, here's kind of a weird example, but you can see here that we've aligned banana to apple. And so standard closure style is like, okay, yeah, you want to align this whole thing up to this indentation point, right? Okay. Uh, as recommended by the closure style guide, and as is the default with par infer, trailing closing parens all get gathered at the end of a line or the end of a form. So if you feed this into the formatter, you get this output, okay? And like 99% of the time, this is what you want. But there are occasions when you might want those trailing parens on the next line for a comment, or a really common case is a rich comment block like I've got here. So if you want to hold those parens, you just put a comma and the formatter will respect that comma and it will not uh, move those parens for you. Again, this is 100% compatible with par infer. Let's see, uh, where am I at time? Uh, I said earlier that it, standard closure style takes your code and it adjusts it. And this is true except for namespaces. So standard closure style will parse your namespace into a data structure and it will pretty print it from scratch. So I think, I, I'm actually really excited about this feature of the library. If you use standard closure style, all of your namespaces will always be consistent with each other, okay, from scratch. And, it, and this is so that it can do things like sorting the requires and putting the major clauses in the same order, right? So you can feed this into the formatter, right? And it will do this. Note that the, note that your requires are sorted and also see what it did with this library it saw that this was one package and it combined it. Also note that this, sorry, also note that this comment was uh, like maintained, right? Standard closure style will do its best to maintain your comments in your namespace form, but it does print them from scratch every time. And here's another example. Uh, oh yeah, this works with reader conditionals, okay? So like here we have some relatively complicated reader conditionals and some code. Um, and like another comment, this comment's kind of attached to the line below it, right? And this is what you would get with standard closure style. Okay, again, this is pretty printed from scratch consistently. Uh, so, standard closure style is a algorithm for doing this. It's currently implemented as a single file JavaScript file with no dependencies. So there's no Webpack here, there's no Babel, okay? This is something, this is like, this would work in Internet Explorer 6, right? Like it's, it's the most vanilla JavaScript you've ever seen in your life. Again, no dependencies at all, it's a single file. But it's written in such a way that the algorithm can be ported to multiple programming languages. And this is my, my plan and my hope for this library. I wanna port this library to meet you where you're at. So I wanna port it to Lua, to Python, to other languages, I want it to be in your editor so that you can just press save and format your files, right? Uh, let me show you one more cool thing about this. There's this runtime called bun, it's like a JavaScript runtime, and it, it has this feature where you can basically give it a JavaScript file and it will produce a binary for you. So I'm in the, I'm in the standard closure style project right now, and I'm gonna run this command, okay? And then now, this is binary right here, this my, this, uh, this is a, let's check that uh, metabase. Right? So that's a binary, okay? 
uh, does the same thing as the program. And this works on Mac, Windows, and Linux. And so you can do, I don't know, you can do whatever you want with a binary. You can put it on your path, you can put it in a Docker file. I don't know what you kids are doing with binaries these days. Uh, but it's super easy and it works everywhere and it's just super fast and super slick. Um, so yeah, thank you for coming to the talk. Um, okay.